Hey guys, it's Sherry and welcome back to my channel. In this tutorial, we're going to be using resin to create our own Agate Slice inspired serving board, just like this one. And I have to say, I think it's super beautiful and it's actually pretty easy to do. So make sure you stay tuned. I've got this Agate Slice and I thought it was super pretty and that I could use it in some way so I've come up with the idea of kind of doing an agate slice inspired chopping board and actually using a little bit of like the agate slice in it and this is going to be a two layered chopping board so I'm going to do my base one and stick my agate slice in and then I'm going to come back in with more resin once that's set and do like detail so I'm going to start off with my pink so the colors that I'm using today the colors that I'm using today is I've got the Fuchsia Powder from Artie Sue, the Pearl White from Artie Sue, the Bronze Powder from Artie Sue, Sangria from Artie Sue. For my white, I'm using the Resi Tint from Ellie Chem. I'm also using their Resin Tint Metallic Pigment, and this is in Rich Gold. And I'm also using the Pearl Effects Duo Red Blue. I don't know if I'm going to end up using all of these, but I think it's going to look really good. I feel like with sort of like an agate size, any sort of crystal geo thing, you can use quite a lot of colors because in nature they are really colorful or they'll have like shades of the same hues. So I definitely do think like you don't have to keep your colors to a minimum when you are doing this. So. I kind of want my agate to sort of sit like that so I'm going to slowly create like my pattern around it it's not going to be like a hundred percent agate legit but it's just going to be really beautiful chopping board so this is the fuchsia and the resin that I am using today is the Ellie Chem resin Now this is the Duro Chrome, and I'm just going to go around the outside and kind of follow that initial shape. It doesn't have to be perfect. These two colors look amazing together. Oh, I'm happy I added this in. I've been really favoring this Duro Chrome in a few pieces recently. I've been trying to. Um, expand out and try new colors because I don't know about you guys but I find I tend to stick to the same colors again and again because I know I like certain color combos and I know they work so it doesn't have to make me think now I'm just going to go around and this is with the pearl white and now this is just with your normal white And by normal, I just mean the matte white. And this is the is this Sangria. Yeah. But basically, I'm kind of just doing my agate slice style because that is where I'm going to be sticking um, my piece into. But I'm slowly just building it up and building it up. I don't want to go like too nuts too fast, I guess. And I'm going to add my agate slice in at the very end. If I add it now, I might get resin on the top of it. So I'm going to wait to the very end when the resin's kind of in that gelling point because that way, wherever I place it, it's going to stay. If I put it in now, it might slip and slide because the resin's still really fluid. So I'm just adding a little bit of gold into to break up all of that white. And now I've got like my initial piece started, I'm going to slowly start filling in the rest of the chopping board.
So I've just given it a bit of a tilt to help stretch out and expand the resin. And I love like the really like beautiful lines that you get when you do do that. Comes out stunning. Now I'm just kind of waiting and seeing how this moves. It's still really dripping at the moment, so I don't want to add in my um, agate slice yet until it sort of stops moving and starts the gel. Um, and it keeps evolving and it's bringing out some like really stunning, beautiful patterns. I'm super happy with how it's looking so far. And the colors I'm really happy with because they're kind of like, I normally go for a bit more, I guess, muted tones and these are a lot more bolder so it's really pushing me out of my comfort choice but i really am happy with the color choice so now all i'm going to do is just wait a little bit add in my slice once it's gelled and then i've got my second layer to do once it's set so i'm very excited it's looking really good if you're new to my channel don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up as it really does help me out and if you haven't yet followed me go and subscribe it's just that way or that way either way there's a little subscribe button and don't forget to hit the notification bell so that way you'll get notified every time i post and i post every week doing something new with art craft diy resin it's always something new every single week the resin started to gel so it's a perfect time to add in my slice i think this is looking super beautiful and exactly kind of what i wanted um because it is mimicking that slice a little bit so I think I might just place it in, smoosh it on down. The resin's gonna lock it in as well. Um, and then when I come along and do my second coat, I think it's gonna be really, really beautiful. Okay guys, so it's time to do layer number two. And I've remixed up all of my resins, but just in a very, very tiny amount. So I'm using all the same color. The only color I haven't decided to go for is the fuchsia because there's like a ton of it already. Um, and I don't want to end up with a chopping board that's just fuchsia. But as it is right now, I think it's really gorgeous. And you could stop right here if you wanted to um, and not do any more because I think it just looks really pretty but we're going to do this and make it um a little bit more interesting so we're going to be adding like ribbons of resin and we're going to be doing a mini dirty pour so these resin has been sitting um for a little bit while and it's starting to get a lot thicker you can't do this when your resin's still really fresh because it just blends out too much um so you need to let your resin like actually sit there for a bit and get thick um, and not really runny. Um, if you do it when it's just brand new, it just blends and you lose all those really gorgeous patterns that we're going for. So you're just gonna need a spare empty cup and we're just gonna pour the resin in to do our dirty pour. Where can I I'll do it? These cups are great to get to if you are doing more intricate work. So I have decided that I want to have through here and back around and then kind of around my crystal is where I'm going to be doing my dirty pour to make it have like, I guess, a more agate slice feel. So I'm just going to be pouring it out. And then I'm going to leave it. I'm not going to overwork it too much. Add a little bit of heat just to get any bubbles. 
You can see like all the ribbons coming up and all the swirls. Actually looks super pretty. If there's a color that you don't really see popping up, you can always just like add it in really slightly. Now I'm just gonna stop. It's really easy to overdo this. That is it for the second layer. We will be coming back in to do a third layer, which is just a clear coat. If I was to add the clear resin in now around that, all of these patterns would just blend out into the clear and you would lose those really thin little ribbons. So you don't wanna touch this too much. Um, so we're just gonna let that set and come back and do a clear coat, which I know is like a lot of steps, but if you want something that's got a lot of detail, sometimes you've got to do a lot of steps. But I think it is looking really, really pretty. The last step, if you want to, it's completely personal preference, is I just like to do a top coat of resin because obviously with these second um, pores of resin, you get that sort of edge. So I like to just go along and top coat it all. And that way the agate slice also sits more flush into the resin and doesn't stick out as much. Because resin self leveling, that if I just do a really nice top coat over everything, it will all become nice and level. And that way you won't even tell that you've had multiple layers to create this. So it is a bit of an extra step and this style does take longer than obviously just doing one layer but I do feel like it's really worth it when you do see it like finished and you get so much detail when you do the multiple layers. I'm just using a food safe resin. Uh, if you are going to use this for food because obviously it is a chopping board just make sure that you are using a food safe resin to do your top coat, um, art resin's great, bonds, epoxy glass is also food safe. So just make sure that you do use that. Um, and also too, if you're only planning on putting like food down there, um, it's not as much of an issue, but obviously I think if you are gonna be using it to do anything with food with, you should be using food safe resin. And then just the last step is to just give it a torch. I want to know your thoughts in the comments below. Did you like this agate inspired tutorial? Do you think it is something that you would do yourself? Please let me know below. And if so, what color like slice would you pick to put into it? I am really interested in hearing your thoughts. If you're new to my channel, please do subscribe as I post new content every week, mostly to do with resin, but also art, crafts, and DIY projects. And don't forget to hit that notifications bell so that way you get notified every time I do post. And if you did like this video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up as it really does help me out. It lets YouTube know to share this to more people. So yeah, if you're new, please do subscribe. Don't forget to hit the likes. And also don't forget you can follow me on all of my other social medias to find out what I am doing throughout the week. Thank you guys so much for watching.